The focus was in relapsed refractory disease and there was a very practical down-to-earth approach in terms of guiding physicians on management strategies for relapsed refractory myeloma. Chaired by my very good friend and colleague Antonio Palombo, um, he framed the discussion and framed the seminar. Um, we then had a Thanos Dimopoulos talk about the immunomodulatory treatments and uh, we had no less than Hezo San Miguel framing proteasome inhibition. So the faculty was just top notch. But to me, the highlight of the whole session um, was the remarkable um, uh, lecturing, or rather, I should say, presentations by a patient who is actually a leader of a uh, patient support group from Texas. And he's a wonderful man, uh, Yalek Baru, and he's originally from uh, Ethiopia, actually, but has lived in America for many, many years. And he was diagnosed with myeloma, no less, at the age of 25. And he had had a series of appropriate treatments over the course of the last 20 years. And very interestingly, he presented with very aggressive myeloma. This wasn't a person who had indolent disease. He had clearly highly uh, active symptomatic illness at the time of presentation, had done very well, had collected stem cells, had chosen not to have a stem cell transplant, which was fascinating, uh, and had done really, really well with the sequence of immunomodulatory treatment, proteasome inhibition, and novel therapies, uh, and really was a perfect uh, um, advocate for what we were talking about. Uh, namely, you know, best treatment options for patients. And what I particularly liked in his presentations were that they were very, he's a computer scientist and a sort of, you know, software systems person, so he had a very analytical approach, um, which was very, 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 I thought, very informative. But obviously as a patient, he's first and foremost a person who speaks directly to the nature of the journey of a myeloma patient today. I thought it was fantastic, and I thought it was the, it was the highlight of the, of the, of the session. Um, but I think what we shared at that um, session and has been actually th the theme, as you know, Charlie, for the meeting, um, has been the excitement around monoclonal antibodies, the excitement around histone deacetylase inhibition, the excitement around next generation drugs, um, pomalidomide for the immune class, and of course carfilzomib um, for proteasome inhibition, and in addition to carfilzomib now, exazomib. Um, which as an oral agent is showing great promise with the interim analysis of the Tourmaline 1 study, which is the randomized um, phase uh, 3 study comparing exazomib RD versus RD um, being reportedly positive, although the data are not going to be presented until later this year in full. Um, so we had a real plethora of information at the session. Uh, I think what were highlights for me, Charlie, were um, the antibody data for sure. Um, the elotuzumab RD versus RD study that Dr. Sagalonial is presenting, you know, that trial we're, we're obviously part of and it's been a, it's been a wonderful journey with elotuzumab. Uh, we're showing a four and a half month progression free survival benefit overall. But if you actually look at specific subgroups, the story is very, very impressive. Um, if you look at adverse cytogenetics, patients with adverse cytogenetics enjoy particular benefit from the three drugs versus the two. If you look at those patients who achieve complete response, the degree of benefit in terms of progression-free survival is substantially longer um, in the antibody-based treatment. So there's lots there to be very, I think, encouraged by. What I was particularly impressed by with the elotuzumab experience, and it's both been our experience as one of the, you know, the lead US enroller and, of course, the data set bear it out, um, is that for patients under the age of 65 and over the age of 65, the clinical benefit was the same. And the adverse event rate was very similar. So older patients can tolerate elotuzumab really quite well. And I think that points to how I think this antibody is going to line up. It's going to line up very easily, I think, in the relapsed, relapsed refractory setting. But I think it's going to get very broad use. The other big presentation, of course, is that of the daratumumab data. Um, daratumumab is clearly a breakthrough drug. And uh, I think the success of the large phase two um, study in the United States points to that. Again, uh, Sargolonial presented that at ASCO and is presenting it here at EHA. And the bottom line is that this drug has fulfilled the promise it showed in phase one. In that study in which we participated, um, we were able to show um, that about a third of patients had substantial responses, even the most refractory, at a dose of 16 mg per kilo. And what Saga showed in his study was exactly the same, that at 16 mg per kilo, in a larger phase two cohort of patients, uh, all heavily refractory, in fact, a significant number of refractory to POM and carfilzomib, as well as bortezomib and LEN, we got a robust response rate of about 30%, including high-quality responses and even CRs. So I think that the message from the Sirius trial, as it's called, is really very positive. 
think it suggests to us that this is a real breakthrough antibody. And when you think about when you combine it with other drugs, what that does, I think there you start to see where this is going. Just remind everyone that at the ASCO meeting uh, last year uh, and at ASH last year, we got the first readouts of um, daratumumab and lenalidomide, led by my colleague Torben Plesner, again in phase one work of which we were part, in which we showed that in cohorts of patients, 100% of them responded in the relapsed refractory setting. It's unprecedented information. So I think that that was really the excitement for me of, of, of the last couple of weeks, was to see the monoclonal antibody data framed.